Today we're looking at notes 312, converting from vertex form to standard form. So yesterday we looked at quadratics in vertex form and looked at some of the characteristics from that specific form. Today we're looking at standard form, which we have dealt with before. Remember when we did factoring, we dealt with standard form of a quadratic. Um, but we never graphed standard form of a quadratic unless we use the graphing calculator. And we're going to talk about that in further detail today. So I want to remind you that yesterday the vertex form looked like a quantity x minus h squared plus k. And the advantage of vertex form was that we could easily get that vertex. Now you'll notice in standard form there is no h, there is no k, so it's not easy to get the vertex. However, that a value is the same, so in order to determine max or min, it's going to work the same way. You're going to look at your a value just like we did yesterday. Okay, so I want to remind you, looking at example number one, this quadratic is in vertex form, like we looked at yesterday, and the vertex is the opposite of whatever sign is on the inside, so negative 1, comma, and keep the one on the end the same. So negative 1, negative 4. The vertex is going to be a what? It's going to be a minimum value because that 6 is positive, which means it opens up, looks like a U. So that vertex is going to be a minimum point. The line of symmetry is at x equals negative 1, same value as the x value for your vertex. Now the y-intercept is something we did not talk about yesterday, and that is going to be easier to determine when the quadratic's in standard form. So let's go ahead and do part E. Let's take this quadratic in vertex form and write it in standard form. And this is actually just going to be a simple order of operations. So remember PEMDAS is your order of operations. That says you have to take care of parentheses first. So in this parentheses, we can't do anything inside of there because x plus 1 can't be combined. They're not like terms. So move on to the next thing, exponent. Yes, we have an exponent. So we need to clear that out of there. So we're going to leave the 6 on the outside. Remember that squared up there just means 2. It means x plus 1, I'm going to do my best to write very nice and neat, times x plus 1. And then don't forget your minus 4. Okay, so PEMDAS says, again, multiply is next. So we're going to multiply these two binomials by each other first. And you could either use FOIL or BOX. If you need to use box, go ahead and do it out to the side. Pause the video if you need to. I'm going to use FOIL just for sake of time and space. So FOIL says first, so that's x times x, so don't forget your 6 on the outside. x times x is x squared outer, first outer, so x times 1, which is just 1x inner 1 times x again, so 1x again, and then last 1 times 1, so plus 1. Close your parentheses and don't forget the minus 4 on the outside. So with every step we have to revert back to the beginning of PEMDAS, and PEMDAS says parentheses first. We've got to combine like terms in the parentheses if possible, and we can. We've got the 1x and the 1x, so don't forget your 6 on the outside x squared plus 2x is what that becomes, plus 1. So now again, we can't combine anything else in the parentheses. Don't have any more exponents, so multiply. Still have some multiplying to do. So basically, we're distributing that 6 to everything inside the parentheses. So we'll get 6x squared plus, goodness, 12x plus 6, and then don't forget your minus 4 on the outside. 
So last step is going to be, we don't have any dividing, adding or subtracting. So the only two like terms we have are the plus six and the minus four. So we've got six x squared plus 12 x, six minus four is going to be two. So drag down that y equals, like we should have been doing the whole time, but we were being lazy. Oops. So that's your final answer. Now our quadratic is in vert, uh, excuse me, standard form. So standard form, the advantage of it is that we can easily find that y-intercept. So remember, just like when you're doing your linear x and y-intercept, how do you find a y-intercept? You plug in 0 for x. So if I were to plug in 0 for x here, Notice, this would have zero in it, so six times zero is zero. This would have zero, so both of those two first terms would be zero. So always your y-intercept is going to be that last number because when you plug in zero for x, both of those first two terms are gonna turn to zero. So your y-intercept is always going to be that c value there on the end. And let us write it properly as a point. Our y-intercept is the point 0 for x, comma 2 is our y-value. So your y-intercept is always going to be 0, comma c when it's written in standard form. All right, let's look at number two. We'll try and go through it more quickly. So part A from yesterday, vertex, opposite of the first one, 2. Keep that one the same, 4. That a value is negative. That means it opens down like so. That means that vertex is a maximum value. The line of symmetry is x equals oops, 2. And our y-intercept, remember to find y-intercept, we've got to change it to standard form. So standard form, changing this one over, follow PEMDAS, we've got negative 2 x minus 2 times x minus 2 plus 4. So using FOIL, I won't draw it out this time, we've got negative 2, you should get x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. Close your parentheses, don't forget your plus 4 on the outside. Combining your like terms on the inside, your two minus twos, you get x squared minus 4x plus 4, close your parentheses, plus 4. When you distribute that negative 2, this becomes negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 8. And then don't forget your plus 4. Oops, that kind of lost its side there on the outside. And then when you combine all of your like terms on the end, you get y equals negative, goodness, negative 2x squared plus 8x. And then negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. So that is your final answer. And remember, to get your y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x, which makes both, both uh, excuse me, of those first terms 0. So your y-intercept is simply 0, comma, negative 4. And we didn't graph either of these, so let's go ahead, go down and do that using our info. Okay, so in order to graph these, all that I'm going to require that you graph is this given information up here. So you've got your line of symmetry, which is at negative one. So let's go ahead and draw our axis of symmetry. And our vertex, which is at negative one, negative four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and we've also got that the y-intercept is at 2. So that means on the y-axis, it intersects at positive 2. So, and remember that this line of symmetry 
tells us that there should also be a point directly on the left the same distance from that line of symmetry. So that is a rough sketch of our quadratic function for this one. The one on the right here, we've got a line of symmetry at positive two. So come over here and dash your line of symmetry at positive two. Vertex is at two, one, two, three, four. And then our y-intercept on this one is at negative four. So come down one, two, three, four, plot your point. And remember, since it's symmetrical, that means we are two away from the axis of symmetry, so we need to also be two away from the axis of symmetry on the other side. So go ahead and draw your rough sketch, and you are finished.